Yes, my name is Paul Savage. I work at the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine in the Department's Meat and Milk Policy Division. And one of my areas of responsibility is the operation of milk production partnerships. Well, there's been a, quite a degree of evolution in milk production partnerships over the last number of years. Um, they started in 2002 with a, a joint initiative by Chagas and the department. And they were essentially composed of uh, milk producers, separate milk producers coming together to realise benefits in terms of economies of scale and, and uh, social benefits and economic benefits. Um, in 2003, they were extended from there from just milk producers to allow sons and daughters of milk producers to go into partnership with them. They were known as new entrant parent partnerships. And uh, those partnerships were in situ for the first number of years of partnership arrangements. Uh, they were fairly tightly regulated under the milk quota regulations and I suppose the operation was somewhat restrictive as a result because all of the criteria and all of the conditionality attached to uh, partnership operation was contained in legislation which made it very difficult to change or to show any degree of flexibility in the operation of partnerships or even to respond to demands from people who are interested in getting involved in partnership uh, to I suppose meet what their newer requirements might be. So in 2008, as part of a review of the milk quota regulations, we looked at the whole area of partnerships. Um, we essentially took all of the day-to-day -day, uh, criteria, operational criteria, out of the regulations and put them into a set of uh, detailed rules, which were much more easily changed and much more easily adapted. It meant we didn't have to enact new legislation if we wanted to uh, make any changes, and it meant that the operation of the regime was made more flexible. We also took the opportunity then to remove some of the impediments that we had seen um, and had been brought to our attention over the, the early years. Things like uh, distance limits between holdings where two farmers could not be more than 20 kilometres apart, for instance, in a partnership. Uh, we had uh, another restriction in relation to the size of quota that one uh, farmer could have in relation to another. Uh, we also had uh, limits in relation to uh, off-farm income. Um, limits also in relation to the number of participants that could be in partnerships. Uh, and also, of course, because they were restricted to milk producers, there was no possibility of, say, dry stock producers or people from other sectors getting involved. So in 2008, we made the changes um, in the context of, of making the, the uh, regime more flexible. We removed a lot of those criteria, removed the distance limits. Uh, we took away the limit on the number of participants, which was set at three at the time. Uh, we also removed the, uh, the ratio of size from one, one partner to another. Uh, we removed off-farm income limits, except in the case of new entrants farming in, in partnership with parents. And we also took steps to allow individual participants in partnerships then to apply under the different milk quota schemes. So they were treated as individuals and it effectively allowed for a kind of a doubling up of entitlements in many cases uh, to again act as an encouragement for people to get involved in partnerships. So they have been, uh, those changes in 2008 have been pretty su successful. We've incorporated those into the milk quota trading scheme. Um, we've seen also that since 08, one third of all the new partnerships that have been registered have incorporated non-dairy farmers. So there's been a real appetite there, a recognition of the fact that uh, that, that was satisfying a demand out there. Um, and we've seen the number of partnerships grow to about 560 as it stands at the moment around the country, of which just over 400 are new entrant parent type partnerships. Um, so that's been the history of the evolution, if you like, of, of the partnership arrangement as on the milk side. Um, I suppose uh, the impetus for the, the latest developments has come from Food Harvest 2020, which has uh, as a kind of a key recommendation the fact that any remaining obstacles to partnership formation and indeed to other types of farming uh, collaborative arrangements in general should be removed. So we've been looking in recent times now at, at uh, clearing uh, remaining internal obstacles as there have been within say the department schemes to the operation of partnerships. Uh, these come up in the context of, for instance, disadvantaged area schemes and uh, modulation ceilings, which essentially, under the different schemes, they're applied to a partnership on a single entity basis. So if two people come together into a partnership, and for instance, there might be a 34 hectare limit in relation to disadvantaged area payments, because the partnership is a single entity, there is a single limit of 34 hectares applied to the two people in a partnership. So in essence, one of the persons involved loses their 34 hectare limit as part of getting involved. So there's a disincentive there because they're losing a potential payment. And it would be the similar case with modulation. The 5,000 modulation limit is applied per, per herd number, per entity, and a partnership is treated as one entity. So the 5,000 limit would essentially be applied to two people involved in a partnership instead of the limit being doubled to 10,000 because it's two individual limits of five. Uh, so those kind of internal obstacles are currently being worked upon um, within the department. Um, the new minister, Minister Coveney, has uh, 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 expressed strong encouragement of partnership operations. He's urged people to consider the option of partnership. And in the context of Food Harvest 2020, he, as part of the, as chair of the implementation committee on the implementation of Food Harvest 2020, has been keen to, if you like, develop the concept and remove those internal obstacles on the milk side, before then looking at extending 
um, the partnership principle to other sectors. So we're engaged on, a, on a, I suppose, a program of work at the moment which will involve hopefully removing those obstacles in, in a shorter time frame as possible and then extending the provisions that are currently available to milk partnerships, I suppose using them as a template to apply to, to other sectors as well. And a couple of the things I suppose that come up there, um, the department has recently uh, published a, a reference paper on its website in just in the last few days, which I suppose discusses the whole area of all of the issues that arise in the context of developing the partnership concept further. Um, things like the rationale behind partnerships, what are the benefits, what are the disincentives that we need to address. So that's available on the department website for people to look at uh, and to make comments on if they wish to. And um, we are now engaged in the process of uh, looking at how we go to the next step, clear the remaining obstacles, move on to non-milk partnerships. And among the issues that have to be looked at there are what sort of guidelines, what sort of principles do we need to apply across the department's activities to make sure that we don't hinder the development of partnerships. And also then what sort of legislative basis do we need to put in place in order to make sure that partnerships can operate effectively and, can be, and that we can be secure in the knowledge that they are genuine arrangements when we allow them then to have individual access to entitlements under different department schemes. We'd hope obviously that work is going on at the moment and we'd hope to make progress on it as, as, uh, as quickly as possible as we can over the next number of months. It'll involve a certain amount of consultation with, uh, with farm organisations for instance, with stakeholders. Uh, but we'd hope to make uh, progress on it as, uh, as quickly as possible over the coming months. Yeah, I suppose we're, we, we've been careful not to be too prescriptive about, about who we're targeting it at or, or who might be best served by the partnership uh, option. Uh, there are many different reasons why people might want to come together in partnership. There are economic reasons, as I said earlier on, social reasons, uh, widely varying circumstances that, can, that, that uh, you could come across on individual farms. So I suppose uh, it's not so much what the best option is for people or, or who are the best demographic to aim it at, our concern, I suppose, is to provide as many options as possible for people. Um, I, I, do, I suppose the idea would be that people can choose from a menu of different types of working arrangements um, and hopefully choose the option that best suits them. So I think in principle the, option, the, the approach would be to be as flexible as possible and simply to provide a menu of options for people that they can choose from rather than to be too prescriptive or, or aim it necessarily at a particular group. Yeah, we would hope so. I mean, again, we've had a good degree of success relatively, I suppose, with milk production partnerships. Uh, there have been issues that we've had to address over the years since they were introduced. But again, the fact that we have 540 operating partnerships out there is, uh, I suppose, a testament to the fact that there is a degree of interest out there. Uh, yes, we would like to see them um, developing further as, as we go forward from here. Um, as I say, Food Harvest 2020 has spoken of the need to extend the partnership concept to other areas. Uh, Food Harvest 2020 obviously is concerned with, with big issues like uh, land availability, land mobility. Uh, if we're going to meet the targets in, in food harvest over the next 10 years, um, then we need to make sure that, that we remove as many constraints as we can in terms of land mobility. Uh, partnerships are one way of doing that. Um, so I, can, I think there is plenty of potential there for, uh, for the, the concept of partnership to, I think, uh, uh, establish itself and, and to grow over the coming years. Yeah.